Welcome back to the second part of episode 12, Just Swim Podcast. So we'll continue where I, where we left off before I went and got a drink. Just for ref, uh, context, I've got I've moved to a wine now. Dad's been drinking a lot of wine recently, and it has left me with none most times. So I've got myself a nice little glass of Malbec red wine. Um, have you got another drink? Uh, no, not same, dr- same drink. I, I've, I mean, I've got another in the fridge, but I okay. haven't finished it yet. I nurse my drinks. I don't know if you've been to the pub with me, but um, yeah, you do, which is good. Um, I only had a small gin and tonic, and I, you know, they go down very easy, so I just whiff that down like water. Um, but the wine, I'll try and nurse this wine a bit, bit more. Um, so defining winning at life. Um, a lot of, I, I guess, one of the things that people. Uh, there's lots of things that people think about winning at life, but I think the most prominent one at the moment is the capital and money. Um, pe- people have the idea that the more money you have, the more things you can do. That And that is true. The problem is with that, for me, that that ideology is once you start earning a certain amount and you hunger for more, th- those are the types of people that that the, the people that have the desire to earn more, and there are exceptions to this rule, obviously, but this idea of desiring more just means that when you do get more. When you do get that pay rise or you do get that bonus, you just end up spending more every month. And I don't believe that is winning at life. Um, I don't, I don't intuitively, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't, doesn't sit right in that. Like what, like, people spend a lot of money on a lot of shit and the more you get the more you spend shit on does that make sense it does i've uh i've written my own things which are done on uh so there's a top scale which is like the metrics so there are three metrics and then there are three things that sit below those metrics which i think are the main ways of grouping how you would achieve those metrics. Okay. Okay. Which for anyone of our, for our audio listeners out there, um, it's going to be quite difficult to understand, but um, so the top metrics are happiness, love and authenticity. So to be winning at life, the scales that I would suggest we start with, which I'm probably wrong about because it's my first time answering this question Mm -hmm. are happiness, love and authenticity um and then i guess each one of those quickly the reason why happiness is there is that i don't think you can really be winning at life if you're not enjoying um life if you're not feeling happy Mm. you might be winning life but you won't feel like you're winning life and you are therefore not winning life Mm -hmm. um love is i think perhaps a gateway to happiness, but I think that it deserves a metric of its own because, um, it's quite love, a distinct thing, isn't it? Yeah. It encompasses quite a lot of things and it doesn't necessarily have to be for a person. It just has to be your ability to love and to feel a feeling that is a bit stronger than happy, sad. And I think love kind of encompasses that extra 20% that we can put. It also, um, it also encompasses the sadness as well. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that, without having that volatility that love inspires either happy or sad you can't have an authentic experience and that is why authenticity comes into the mix um so i can be happy but if it's not authentic and if i'm an instagram promoter and i'm not actually happy but i'm almost conning myself to believe i am happy that tower that i build will one day come crumbling down mm. Um, And do you know what the worst thing about this is, is, or those types of people is they, 
they put other people into this false sense of yes. oh they are happy i should be doing what they are doing they they look like they're winning at life mm. if i'm not doing what they're doing then i'm not winning in life therefore i'm not happy and i feel like that's a big struggle that a lot of the, the i guess our generation generation below us have and maybe some of the older generation you know i, I do see some people in their like mid 30s late late 30s that use instagram more than we do not just instagram but other social medias and and this this like this viewport into this world of oh i'm not happy because i'm not doing what that person's doing and that person looks happy so i think it spans quite quite uh, across generations and that i just i in some way i despise those people that yeah that that do that to others i was wondering if we could start a uh maybe we start a social media account ourselves and we just find like the next social influencer post who's like posting their morning smoothie we just the first comment try our mission is to be the first comment just say fuck you you know how sad your smoothie makes us all feel yeah <laughs> I've just brilliant. gone to the McDonald's drive-through for a fucking cheeseburger, you dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like get or just call the Instagram, get real folks. <laughs> <laughs> and just respond to every Instagram post. That'd get be real. Being fat's fine. <laughs> like, oh, really I think good. that's so true. And I think authenticity is something we don't talk about enough. And we don't we don't value these things enough because we in society, we shun away from the things that are difficult to discuss. The things that and why is that? Why? Why it's um. And th this was this is kind of because we'd rather glamorize it all. And the reason is is because media focuses on those things. A lot of the media that we watch focuses on the yeah on, on the visual stance of uh, and the glorification of things that are visual and like um short-term rewards and stimulating and things like that mm. we're all about hitting pleasure points now we're never about hitting pleasure points in 10 years you know imagine someone goes to a tv producer and is like i want to make a show that teaches people how to be happy in 30 years time and then someone walks in and is like i want to make a tv show that's going to make its viewers happy right now they're going to choose the guy who can make people happy right, right now. now yeah exactly yeah you're going to make us the money soonest. We don't give a fuck about the future. Yeah. People happy yeah. in the future, forget about it. Yeah. And I think that kind of echoes across everything that humans do, even down to the idea that we weren't, we were nowhere, as a, as a human species, we were nowhere near prepared as we should have been for uh, the virus or any upcoming viruses. We were like, think about how we were before this before covid happened there was like we, we i feel like everyone felt or it, looking back retrospectively it, it looks like in the past we f we felt like we were unstoppable that we were all immortal um and whatever 100% and that has that instant like that, that made us not think about the future, and that is definitely not winning at life. If I, so, I that's almost the algorithm that a virus should put, should perform, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what a virus is there. Like, so virus. If you look at nature's layout, is um, when something becomes too dominant, we attack it to restrict its dominance to protect other things. Yeah, maybe. It could so be it's right interesting there. that it came around now. Um, so, but I think anyway. So, sorry, I just no, interject. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, fine. I do it all the time. The there's. I I would like to add that I think as a metric, maybe as like a sub metric. But which one was that? Sorry. Um, just to make sure I get it right. Wow, what, words, what was, words are very precise. Yeah. What did I say? Um, well, we were moaning about authenticity, and then you were moaning about being ready. Um, it's not about being ready. It's it's like um. Forward thinking, prepared. No, you're saying all the wrong words. You're opening long all term, the wrong... short term. No, it's organic. Something... Organic's kind of the the word you were talking about. I feel like isn't authenticity just what we discussed? Isn't that the word? It's not authenticity. It's um, it's like 
Uh, do you know what? Let's, ca- let's carry on. Sorry. Let's go back to what you were saying. It would, I'll try and record Goldfish. it. Goldfish. Um, <laughs> we'll just call it that from now on because that happens to me all the time. Yeah. Um, so below the metrics, I put a few. These aren't the metrics of which you should rate yourself, but if we had to think of an algorithm of the ways that these metrics can be achieved, um, the things I was thinking of are, are people, objects, knowledge, and ideas. Um, Say those again. People, objects, knowledge, and ideas. So like the four most important verticals or, or the, uh, so if, if those are the goals, like happiness, love, authenticity, mm-hmm. the, the engines and sort of motors that will get you there are having a train that's got a carriage of people, a carriage of objects and a carriage of knowledge. Uh, I know that the objects is a questionable one because, you know, you can learn very quickly from traveling that a backpack's all you need. Um, but that doesn't mean that if someone likes vintage watches, that having a vintage watch doesn't make them happy. So, mm. and it doesn't, and and that is authentic happiness. They don't know why, but having that watch makes them happy. Maybe from an advert, but they authentically feel happy because their psyche and the schema yeah. and the way that they see the world makes it so, and that's fine. You can't have a go at that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. I mean, I'd love to because I hate consumerism, but yeah. Um, you said something earlier which was interesting uh, which was the this might bring back what you were talking about before you cold fished you were talking about us being sort of so full of it that we weren't prepared for um, inevitable change like we were just running through the wilderness thinking we're perfect and nothing can go wrong blindsiding everything Mm. Um, and one thing that I was thinking about yesterday when I was lying in bed or it might be the day before actually is um, I was thinking to myself, what are the odds that me, Miyako, my future kid, and Claudia live an undisturbed, happy, fulfilling life? And what I mean by that is, what are the odds that the story that we live as a family is they lived happily ever after, just like my parents did and your parents did and all this stuff, you know? Um, Or that something really bad happens and 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 in my head i was like i can't really not this sounds so stupid yeah and maybe it's it maybe it's not stupid but i find it difficult to envision a future where there isn't a war or a meteor hitting us or a human man-made meteor hitting us i'm very skeptical on Longevity I feel like, of the human race. Yeah, I feel like this is we've got it so good, and we don't realize we have it so good. Um, and I feel like it would be so things like coronavirus have made me realize how easy it would be to to do a rug pull. For anyone who doesn't know what a rug pull is, it's like pulling the rug from under someone's feet. So when they don't expect it, putting it out, um, and it's taking out the support upon which they are standing, mm. which is kind of like I feel like we're heading towards that as a species. And whether it's by our own design, uh, by the design of life, or from an extraterrestrial third-party force. I'm not saying aliens, I'm just saying something we don't understand. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? And, and I, was, I was wondering, what do you think the odds are on that? Because I feel, I feel negative about it. I feel like I need to enjoy the next 20 years, raise these kids so they can try and survive, they can learn about life. And then anything after that is just luck. Am I, I being I think, super I th- negative? I, well, I think part- people don't think like that, do they? Everyone else having their kids like, oh, can't fucking wait to see him go to university. I'm like, <laughs> make it, just make it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I don't. I don't think that's a bad. I I don't. So I see the people that the people that are like what you just said that are um, blind fault, like blind to. Uh, not necessarily chaos, but blind to change, like drastic change. Um, are are flawed. I think that, and I'm not saying that I believe that the world is going to end tomorrow. Um, all I'm saying is, I think part of what you're feeling is number one, what it's like to just be a be a parent. I think. 
I think some parents, I think a lot of parents may think about that at some point in their parenthood of, oh shit, like, are are they like, are they going to make it? Like, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, Being a parent is just worrying. Like, a lot yeah, of the yeah time. I can imagine it is. Like, she's on the sofa jumping up and down and just sat there, just like, she could, just fall she off. could hit her head yeah, yeah. and it could explode. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just honestly, I, I, you just think of the worst outcome for everything. Yeah. It's like you just need rubber walls and everything for these kids. Like, um, and I especially don't think it's a bad thing to be thinking that in the moment. And the, what I was going to say is, I do feel that there was a sweet spot maybe 20 to 30 years ago, if you were our age, 20 to 30 years ago, I feel like that was a real sweet spot of Mm. like, yeah, man, no, not having to worry about too much change. Mm. Uh, There's a lot of, you know, free cash floating around ready for grabs like you don't need much experience to get a job in the bank like if you needed to get a job in the bank in it um, fuck me like I, when now you say that like millennials <laughs> get fucking shat on for being moany bastards but yeah. fuck jesus they like, had it good yeah. um i i had an ex-girlfriend once who uh her dad was like a high up manager in in Barclays, like he was on like working on the top floor in London, yeah. like bringing an absolute rake home. Okay, yeah, yeah. and I spoke to him about his life because like you, that's what you do. You see someone making money, you're like, what did like, you do? Give me the cheat tips. Give me the cheat tips. But obviously in a nice way. So, oh, what did you do at school? Oh, all yeah, these things. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, I was a footballer, played a bit, had a chance at, at playing for West Ham, uh, didn't work out because I was on the booze a lot, and then. I was pretty much homeless at one point. Someone was like, you want a job at a bank? I was like, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the point. And then it is a great, it's actually a really nice guy. But I don't give him justice with that. With that, um, And I did learn things from him. But it's just, it's just a different world, isn't they it? Had like, it imagine they, yeah. right now you needed a job and you're on the booze. People wouldn't even fucking touch you. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't think it's a bad, I think since that point, the human race has kind of it's got harder to it's got harder to i.e. in quotes win at life um and so i don't think the the idea that you have of like worrying too much whether they're like even just going to like make it like i don't think it's a bad idea to think about think ahead about the next 20 years um based on what and i know I mean, we have it pretty good. Me and you have it like pretty good. It's not the best. It's not as good as it was back then, 20 to 30 years ago, when you could buy a house in Walthamstow for 20 grand from the council. Was like, you know, that's that's what used to happen. I know. I, I rent one of them right now. Yeah. I, I, pay a grand, I pay someone a grand a month um, who's a shit landlord. I could go into my landlord being shit, but that's not very interesting, Karen. Um, and you know maybe they didn't earn so much back then, but there was a that was definitely a sweet spot. So I, I don't think it's bad to think like every the poorer are getting poorer and the rich are getting richer. It's going to, in the next during the ne- throughout the next twenty years, unless something drastic really happens to shift that inequality of wealth. Um. There's going to be a rise in unemployment, um, less available cash, less available cash for banks to lend out. Uh, and when they do have the available cash to rent out, i.e. borrowing from the future, interest rates are going to be so high that it's going to be like impossible for anybody to, to pay them. Um, at some point, there will, there, there will be a point at which things just won't work anymore. And will re- will require either drastic change, um, or that will be the end of us. Like there will be like a huge death wave. So I, uh, I've been through the world of conspiracies. <clears throat> I remember there was a time at E-Move where uh, everything was a fucking conspiracy. You got the yeah. chemtrails in the sky. Yeah, my life was. I think my life was so bad that 
I took to the the questioning of yeah. things outside of my life must also be bad. That will make me feel better. Yeah. Um so I was wondering if the sun was real. Um and I do still have my 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 disbelief sometimes. I look in and I'm like I'm not sure, I'm not convinced. Um <laughs> but there's lots of I think it's good to be skeptical in ways. Yeah, 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 and I, yeah. I, I do it more for a bit of fun. But there is one thing that I have which is like boding on me right now, which is that people have there are some people who have so much money and so much power that I don't think we can truly define what power is in this world. I don't think we know it. I don't think we know what technology is out there, what power is out there, what's being repressed, who's in charge of what's repressed, who is the government, what is the government, is it one, is it all of them, is it all a play, is it a simulation? God knows. So many levels to which we don't understand what's going on. Yeah. But there is one thing that we do know, which is people exist who have that power or that money or that position on this planet, yeah? Like, they're out there, all right? Yeah. And they don't seem to be steer. If they're trying to steer things towards, like, a, a great land for us, the people, then they're failing, yeah? As I said, the walls are closing in. Every opportunity where a big event happens, like earlier I was reading that there's trying to be some sort of a government... Uh, get together around coronavirus. Yeah, the treaty the, around yeah, future pandemics. Treaty. Yeah. I was like, fucking great. What? We're not allowed to walk around in public now. So it would be like, we've raised all of this money to save people dying from coronavirus. And because of that, you're no longer allowed to grow your hair longer than six inches. Something <laughs> stupid, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But bit by bit, the walls are closing in. And like, I've just been thinking about how easy, how easy it would be. And You've got all the money in the world, yeah? What's the one problem the world has? It's us. It's humans, yeah? Mm -hmm. The world is so beautiful. You know that feeling when you walk in the countryside? Why does it feel great? Because there's fucking no one, yeah? <laughs> there's fucking no one, yeah? And, and, and the people at the top who've got the money, do you know what their only problem is? All the other people look at him saying, like, oh, give us some of that. Yeah, You've got all yeah, the yeah, money. Yeah. You've got all <laughs> Look at us and all. Oh, give us some of that. Oh, <laughs> give us a little bit. Please, please. And and they have to remain anonymous and it's a difficult life and they're mm. boats and they're just like, oh, yeah, yeah. look at this other little boat in my way. Fuck off. And that's, that's one of the reasons why the they way. have big yachts is to get away from everyone. Yeah, to, just to fucking mow over smaller yachts. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> If they could get rid of us in a heartbeat, they would, and they can. Things like coronavirus, in my opinion, I sound ludicrous, I know, and I hate the conspiracy little voice inside of myself because I see people like me on Twitter all the time. I'm like, oh, it's conspiracy, dickhead. The sun's real, you dickhead. Fucking hell, it hurts your eyes, it's real. Yeah. But, like, the Control-Alt-Delete button is there. They could do it, <laughs> yeah? They could fucking do it. You'd be gone. And do you know what they'd have to do? They dig a hole that's like 500 metres in the ground, and they're like, oi, Jim, it's happening tomorrow. Come to this address. Let's go underground, okay? Um, we're going to have to be there for five, what, five years? We're going to have to be there underground for five years. Yeah, bring your kids, five years. I don't want to be there for five. Well, out, you're not going to want to be out there. Yeah. There's going to be zombies. There's going to be dust in the air where you can't breathe. The sun's going to explode. Because it's not real, it's just a freaking illusion. They don't understand yet. The stars will all come raining down from the sky, and in five years' time, it will all settle. We'll come back up, and do you know what? We brought back dinosaurs. We brought back all the other animals that are extinct. It's going to be great. But there's only fifty of us, so yeah. we're going to have to fuck loads. And don't worry, the girls are fit. Are you coming? And he'd be like, "Yeah, I'm coming." But they can do that. Yeah, they can do that. Like smallpox, yeah, is worse than. What we've got going on now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a nuke. Like, I, I'm even at the point where I reckon they could put on Twitter that a meteor is landing in Canada tomorrow. And just yeah? fucking nuke it. And just nuke it. Yeah. Yeah? Everyone would be like, ha, oh, oh, ha, staring at the sky. Ha, oh, fucking, ha, oh, there's a yeah, nuke. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, and then like set off a few earthquakes around the world so they feel it as well the next day on the news oh um we found out that the meteor has some sort of radioactive ingredient that's coming across the world so you're gonna die uh, and then the tv cuts out and then everyone looks at each other and we will start eating each other because that's what the tv told us to do anyway yeah. if at any time there's a zombie apocalypse just eat each other that's what they've been telling us through media yeah <laughs> So fuck it. <gasps> fuck That's what, what I'm saying. It, it's 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 inevitable. Other the the. the the only thing, so I'm ludicrous, yeah. I have this idea that there's going to be like a staged end of the world event, and some people survive, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty much convinced that that will maybe happen. Um, and I sound ludicrous, and I know I sound ludicrous, but tell me how I'm wrong. The op- the opposite to that is you have all of these rich people doing all this stuff, and they're just like. Oh yeah, do you know what? Let's just fucking let everyone live. Let's have a great time. Why would they do that? So, well, there's a, there's one reason why is they wouldn't be rich if there was nobody else. No, but they would. No, they wouldn't. But it would. Why? Well, they'd be rich in life, yeah, but that's not what they're indoctrinated with. They they've, you know, they want people to preside and rule over. Yeah, exactly. They they want... they'll just make more though. They'll make the, they'll make more, and they'll be gods of them. But they the, the, they already are gods of us. Like, what difference is that? It's just more people. It's just like there'll just be less of them, and which means that they won't have they won't yeah, have less but... less power and less control because they can't. Would you, know... you could you not argue that things like Nazi Germany and Hitler and racism? actually show that there is a trait within humanity that wants to dominate and have a, a perfect species of your own creation rather than, you know, all of this clusterfuck that we've got going on. If you really could, if you had the money, I think they would. I just don't have faith in people who are who are that rich to to make the right decisions. I don't oh, have no, faith in, in people, even if they were nice people. Like... You know, look at Mark Zuckerberg. This is what we said. He's got all the money in the world. He's running Facebook and he's sitting there thinking about how he can make more money out of um, customer class type 15, which is a 15 year old girl. That's my, but this is my point. This is my point. So they don't, they don't think about what life would be like, like what the things that you've, or everything that you've just said, they don't think about. They just go, well, the only thing that's in their head is the little dollar symbol. Where is like, where's the next one? Where's the next one coming no, in? No, 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 no. But they don't. They do. That's no, all they, don't. they that's think what, about. No, the person who thinks about that is the guy who owns Argos and the guy who owns P and Q Cruises or Ryanair. Yeah, that's the guy who thinks about where the next dollar is. The guy at the top of the top of the top of the top. He doesn't even think about money. Money isn't a thing, yeah? Right. There's people out there who aren't even on that level. But, but They might be living underground already. Well, that you might don't be know. It. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, you, you like... It, you can imagine, when, if, you're, if you are that rich, what, what is the life like of being that rich? What you've That's got what I'm saying. I don't are know. a small, maybe maybe a hundred other people in the world. Let's say a thousand maximum that are at a similar level to you. And what you want most is to get closer to number one, so that you can have control over those people as well. So it is in their head. Where's is where's the next dollar? Because what they want is ultimate power. And they don't have it because they're still competing yeah, with other rich people. I don't think power in their groups at the very top is a financial commodity. I think the power is like having control. Oh, yeah. I've same, just, same. I've just got five countries from Africa to sign on with us. Like they're so, part of the new world order now. Same thing. Money is power. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're climbing a race, but I still, I still think that. I, I just, I, I'm not convinced that they wouldn't just blow it all to kingdom come just so they can fuck around themselves. And I, I wouldn't even be surprised if they convince themselves of some sort of religion where that's their purpose. That's what they're there for. 
I don't like, know. I don't know. Like, none of this is making sense to me. They wouldn't be powerful if they got rid of everyone because there'll be no one to be powerful over. They wouldn't be rich. Yeah, but they if didn't realise that. They're just like... Well, then yeah, everything's fine then. So long as they don't have that fault, then we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> just don't let them have that fault. I want to start a conspiracy today. Exactly. I'm in the mood for it. Yeah. Well, we'll catch them before they do it, guys. We'll... Uh, Woody and Tim turn up. We'll fly in at the last minute, smoking daggers, and we'll uh, they're about to flick the switch and be like, "Don't you fucking do that!" Yeah. So don't worry. That's what we're here for. Um, apart from that, was a good one. The old uh, the old metrics of life, though. I think we'll have to work on refining that. For now, we have happiness, love, authenticity, and a word that you can't quite define. Um. Maybe some of the listeners can propose some of their own metrics to happiness. So an interesting thing, like, and it's so weird, this podcast, because we very often, there's, I write all these random topics that I jot <clears> down <throat> like two seconds before we start the cast that I've been thinking of throughout the week or that just come to me at the last minute. And they always end up segueing somehow. Um, so I wrote down, no one is the ideal Satoshi. Um and I guess we could expand that to no one is the ideal person in power. Um, but I do feel like I want to impart some crypto knowledge on our users, on our, on okay. our users. I think our, it's our quite listeners. popular at the moment, so I think we can... Yeah, crypto is popular, so we're forgiven in the sense of talking about it. So who is Satoshi? Very quickly. So Bitcoin was created, a load of tokens or coins, you can call them. Uh, people can purchase them and transact on a ledger that's open, and it's all meant to be around decentralization, meaning that you don't have a bank, a centralized party controlling those transactions, so people can can, can transact in a free, open, Trustless. and somewhat trust lot trustless somewhat private sort of space okay um now satoshi nakamoto was the named alias that was given for the white paper that first talked about bitcoin as an idea um it satoshi, was sol solving the double it was solving the paper was about solving the double spending problem in a decentralized way mm -hmm. and and as part of that white paper that was basically the first time that you know bitcoin was introduced yeah, um, and it went like wildfire from then, and some ideas do, and so ide some I some of the most I beautiful ideas are ideas that have legs on their own, um, mm -hmm. and that's something that not enough products kind of think about. How can this product market itself? Um, but no one is the ideal Satoshi Nakamoto. So he created Bitcoin, and he took a few of the coins for himself, quite a lot of them, yeah? That if you had that amount today, you'd probably be the richest person in the world, I think. I don't know. It'd be Close a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, you'd have a lot of money. Um, these coins have never moved. They've always stayed in one ledger or wallet, you could call it. Yeah. Um, and they're known as like the Satoshi address, the Satoshi tokens. Um, and you don't know if it's a he, a she, a group of people, uh, a bot. You have no idea who Satoshi Nakamoto is. It could be a government. It could be the CIA. No one knows who created Bitcoin. We just have this name. And at work, we were we were sort of joking around about, um, oh, what if it's like the CIA that had, had done it? And then all of a sudden, they, like everyone thinks we're heading towards a more free, decentralized space. But then once everyone's bought it, they come out and they say, no, it's not this, it's this. And we're going to be running the world on Bitcoin now and all this crap. Yeah, Conspiracy mm -hmm. City, okay? Mm -hmm. Um but I was sitting there, little Tim thinking outside the box, and I said, I think the more interesting question is not what would the worst Satoshi Nakamoto be, but who would be the best, like the best Satoshi the, like to come forward? Who would be the one that is good for humanity? And I came to the kind of realisation that I don't think anyone is the ideal Satoshi. And I guess you can also, also translate that to power. I don't think anyone... Or any group is the perfect power owner um but just in this sense of it like who would you say is the the most ideal satoshi nakamoto i said one person but i want to see what you think david attenborough that's a good one he'd turn it off straight away yeah <laughs> because of all the harm that's, it does to the environment that's true I said Elon Musk. 
I am not so sure. I'm not either. He's convinced me of authenticity, though, and an understanding of happiness and love. Yeah, he has, but... Um, and me too. But it could just be a great PR stunt. I don't think it's PR stunt. I, For me, he's too volatile. It's true, yeah. Um, he adds a flair to life that can be at the expense of things. I, one thing that was interesting is I remember at the start of COVID, him coming out saying, like, this is going to be over in a month. He massively blindsided it. But then maybe coronavirus should have been over in a month, but it went on because we kept talking about it and we kept making news articles about it and we kept wearing masks and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's another COVID debate. But, yeah, I said Elon. Um, um, but, it, it, uh, but I think you're right. Do you get I, what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, d- I, d- like, I don't think there is like, a Everyone's leader. like, oh, it could be this person. It's like, well, dude, like... Bob Marley, maybe? Yeah, well, he's dead, isn't he? You want well, someone who's you want someone who's dead, hopefully, and then they can't touch the tokens. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I mean, I'm kind of happy with the state. I'm kind of happy with the state of how it how it's been left. Like, I kind of enjoy the the idea of not knowing. Like, I, 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 actually, that's the answer. That's the answer for me. That is the answer. The the best Satoshi Nakamoto is the one that is that exists, mm. i.e. doesn't exist. The yeah. best person to have power is the person that does not exist. Wonder, I wonder if he knew that and he made it. Maybe. He put the Maybe. tokens to a side, but then like scrambled the private key so he could never know them. Maybe. So we're always left in this flux of not knowing. Yeah. And then not stepping forward and being like, because that's the whole point is that if you believe in decentralization and kind of the stuff we've spoken about today, apart from all the stuff that I brought up about the sun, if you believe in some of that stuff, then you probably wouldn't one day want to come out and be like, I'm the guy who did it. It's me. Yeah. You, know you I mean? definitely wouldn't want to You wouldn't be Zuckerberg and all over the place. No. And, and the thing is, is, like the level of risk involved of announcing who you are, like, gee, you've got all of that. Essentially, you own the the wallet of I don't know how many. Can you do a quick Google search on how much is in Satoshi's or go on Ether Scan and, and check? How um, many? To- do you want to know how many tokens of the value? I want to know dollar value. Actually, do both. How many bitcoins does Satoshi have? Still, that says, does he still have? He has it anyway. Um, one million bitcoins. One so million bitcoins. At one 15K million times. Bitcoin. Oh, geez. Three, That's... four, five, six times 50. Let's just say it's worth 50,000. Oh, it's basically 60,000. Okay. Might as well round up when the number's that big. Yep. Okay. So it's six. Where's the million? Well, the fact that well, you have to, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, 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 but this is actually really obvious. 60,000 times a million is 60,000 60, million. million. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know why I took to Google for that. Um, this did make me think about something whilst you were doing it though, which is, um, I said, Mark Zuckerberg is a, is a douchebag. Um, we said last Pretty Patel. I'm just thinking we should make a cunt list and then we could top it up throughout every podcast. <laughs> um, in order of which we spoke about them. Um, and then you never know, 100, we, episode, right, we can 100 episode special, we can read them out. Yeah, right. uh, so we'll, we'll rank them on episode 100. We'll, we'll re, re, re-rank them. Zuckerberg, Pretty Patel. Is there anyone we've discussed in previous um, podcasts? The Twitter owner... I don't think he makes it, does he? He's a deceptive. He's a deceptive cunt. You put him on a separate category of de- a deceptive, cunt. deceptively Ac- accidental cunts. Um, no, no, he's deceptive, just a de- yeah. de- deceptive right. cunt. We'll we'll put him on there, Jack, Jack Dorsey. Dorsey. I'll put an asterisk, asterisk with a D. Deceptive. D for deceptive. Yeah, and then I'll do a key that says D for deceptive. Um. I will leave it at that for now. I'm yeah. sure there'll be more that come on their way. I'll, I'll have to uh, stay, keep that on a, a G drive or something. We'll have to top it up as we go. Yeah. Um, anyway, back to back to Satoshi. Um, I can't remember where we left off, but 
uh, um, six, eight, 60 million billion loads of money that's six, where we were at. Sixty thousand million a, a, a billion is it's basically an american Sixty thousand million doesn't sound like that much mm. uh, no i know it's a lot but like so if you if, if you said to me ah oh, i got six hundred six i got sixty thousand dollars today i'd be like Oh well done, mate. Like not life changing, but well done. Well, you got yeah. Then you have to times that by a million. I mean, well, it's, it's a lot more than sixty-one million, but it's not like a million million. I think there's people out there who have a million million, isn't there? No, 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 no. So an no? American billion is a why, thousand million. Why do we break up these? So it's sixty billion. That that wallet has sixty billion dollars in. Sixty billion. Yeah, there's people with more than sixty billion, isn't there? Yeah, um, well, I thought they were like trillion. Is what the fuck's a trillion? Um, is that a hundred billion is, trillion is, billion? Is Elon the biggest network? He was, but then I think uh, is uh, Bezos overtaken again? Probably because the Tesla share dip, didn't it? Bezos net worth two hundred billion. Bezos is a dick as well. I think he might make it two hundred billion in August twenty eight, and so sixty billion. Yeah, he's not the richest, but he's up there, Satoshi. Yeah. Um, Do you know what happened with Jack Ma? Uh, the Alibaba guy. Yeah, because he like went missing, dropped off the rich list, and all that crap, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so I think so. Basically, I think what happened was China was threatening Alibaba that they wanted to break up the group um, because it had too much of a monopoly. Hmm. Um, that's about the same time that Jack Ma went missing. Um, so I don't know. I I may I what I, I don't worry about it. Jack Ma is also a bit of a cunt, um, but he I no doubt knowing China he probably got some like death threats about if if you don't um, if you don't break up the group we're gonna kill you or whatever. Hmm. Um, China the new we spoke about Nazi Russia Germany. a bit before, but. China is becoming a very interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah, they're they're on a rocky they're on a rocky road. Um, saying that though, there has but, been gone. No, 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 no. This these are the topics where fact is more important than me being a dick. So yeah, go. No, this is totally unrelated. But anyway, I, I watched um a video of this. This and uh, I can't remember the YouTube channel. It's like L- L- Liz. Liziki, I think the name is. She's a Chinese uh, a vlogger, I suppose, and mate. I'll send you it, and you and Claudia have to watch it. It's like the most serene thing. Like it's just, it's just amazing. Um, what in terms of enjoyable to watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's All just... right, only if I can send you one back that's a South Korean person. Yeah, right. Which is about interior design. You'll like her. Yeah, okay. Brilliant. Um, but anyway, China. Um, there's been know, another of... thing on YouTube quickly. So yeah. there is. Um, so there's a lot of because I'm in a circle with Claudia, who is Indonesian, who has friends and family who have added me on Instagram and all this stuff. I have like an Asian sphere on my social medias. Yeah. Um, and a lot of things that I've been seeing at the moment is this is a touchy topic, but Asian hate. Asian yeah. hate, yeah. Asian hate, anti anti Asian hate posts and like awareness about it. Yeah, and um, I'm kind of like really, I'm just kind of bemused by it all. And I think I think so. I kind of understand Black Lives Matter. I kind of understand how these things occur. I think the George Floyd thing was awful. I think that. Like the racism that different, as a white person, it's you feel like you almost can't talk about it. Um, is awful that that black people have been through and that minorities in general get. I uh, know. See, this is I'm calling bullshit here. I know. I'm calling bullshit. I don't. I I have not done well. Well, uh, I haven't done something i i wasn't the person that enslaved the tribes in uh wherever they came from nigeria 
But there were um, there were Ethiopia. in Africa there were what and in Egypt there were white slaves like there's slaves everywhere. There's, there's slaves there's everywhere. Still, there. still and I know slaves. it's not the same thing. I, I, I honestly I think I'm calling it's, bullshit our podcast again, is gonna, Our podcast is going to get blown up in a minute. Like, I don't care. They like, said black lives don't matter. We're not saying that. I think I think my main problem is is that people with the Asian hate thing is like black lives matter occurred because of a significant event in George Floyd and the uprising around that and everything that's happening in America in particular, okay? Yes. And it was a one-off thing. What? Not one-off. It's It was a recurring... No, the, the reaction was thing. a one-off thing. Black yeah, Lives Matter, the yeah, movement, yeah, 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 was a yeah. one-off thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you have, like, it's almost Asian Lives Matter, yeah? And it, it it's just like you don't realise that you're... You're segmenting yourself as a group just by saying stop Asian hate. Yeah. You're segmenting yourself as a as a target. You're saying exactly. we are targeted and Continue we are targeting. vulnerable <laughs> and here's what's going on. And it's like uh, dude, yeah. do you, like should the police just read out a list every month five Asian hate crimes? Yeah, ten, what do, sw- ten yeah, Swedish hate crimes. Yeah, what do you? What do, you, what what do, do they want? want? Do they yeah. want a roster. They want a roster, and and also, it's not going to change things. Just talking about it in that way. And and another thing was like, um, there was an artist that had all of these statements. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to find it. Now um, I'm very like this is uh, I you know. I'm on I scroll through TikTok in the morning. Um I don't follow it's ba- I don't, basically don't follow anyone other than Liza on TikTok. Which means my feed on my home screen is essentially somewhat random, somewhat personalized to what I've seen before. Um a lot of what I'm seeing at the moment is um, a lot of what I'm seeing at the moment are people that are against this idea of like, yeah, don't why, like, don't don't put yourself into like, you're putting yourself into, into groups, but they're sort of contradicting the, the main sort of um news uh, like flows that are happening at the moment they are making cases against and in some cases like in the case of black lives matter there are some um uh, a recent one that comes to mind is i think she she might have been nigerian or maybe from burkina faso maybe something like that it's kind of northern northwestern um africa um and she was explaining that um she was basically she was saying the black lives matter is bullshit like she was just calling it right out and saying the people the kinds of people that are in black lives matter they don't really know what's going on they're just like they're, they've followed this suit of you know Oh, other people's do it, talking about Black Lives Matter. I should be in that group because I don't identify with any other group, so it's I just, should join join this cult ideology and have something to talk about. It's the same problem that we spoke about with feminism. Yeah, very similar sort of thing, and uh, it got me thinking. Um, it, I think this happened today actually when I thought about this. Like, I never want to associate myself with any kind of group, and any kind of group that has an ideology a strong ideology towards one bias and the reason is because of that the reason why i'm never going to be like that is because i know for a fact that i if one day i will regret being in that position i will there will be like someone eventually someone is going to call out this bullshit that i'm a part of and i mm. will agree with it and the entire years that I've spent indoctrinated into that cultism would would be a, like just like blown to pieces. Um, but there's also 
just a lack of accuracy in these movies. Yeah, like, there like is. one of the there's an artist thing. I can't find it now because someone said it on their story and stories aren't forever unless you save them. But yeah. Um she'd reposted it was it was like five different pictures, each with a quoted statement, yeah. Like a sort of assessment of what's going on. Yeah. And each one was worse than the other. But the last one I was like, oh, this is bullshit. How's it got like twenty thousand likes and all this crap? Um, and it said something like, "You you glorify our women's bodies, but then abuse them in public." Yeah, like as in like, basically, I think what they're trying to say is that there's such a thing as Asian porn, but you don't like. But there's also women are assaulted that are Asian. I, I was just like, what? It's like. There is every ethnicity porn that there is. You're not special because you have a Pornhub category. <laughs> right. I don't think it's just about Pornhub. I think... No, uh, they, they were literally trying right. to... It said oh, through right. porn as well. It oh, said okay. through porn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I've, I haven't just added that in. It's like my mind's gone there. Oh, it's okay. like <laughs> It's like everyone loves a bit of Asian poon art. Like, that's what they were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like... I, I just... I, I don't subscribe. <laughs> like, I don't no, get it. That wait. doesn't mean that you like, oh shit, there's an Asian coming down the road. Everyone bow down. We like that porn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's well, not I, how the world works. No, that's not how the world works. And but the same... why is that artist trying the art? Just shut up. Because, so here's, well, there's, there's, there's one reason, which is that, um, it's, it's publicity, isn't it? It's, it's tapping into the wave. Even yeah, it's now, tapping into the wave. Even now, I went. I tried to find the thing yeah on Instagram. I typed in Asian hate. The hashtag is freaking pumping. Yeah, I and bet. It, it gets to the point where you have to question: Are the people posting this stuff? Do they care about stopping it, or are they enjoying watching these it. videos of conflict? Exactly. Exactly. Are they enjoying watching the Asian woman get upset? Because it causes a, a conflict inside of themselves, yeah. which riles them up, which releases some sort of chemicals and makes you feel something. And it's good to feel something. Yeah, It's good to stand for something. But fuck me, just consider the consequences. Otherwise, in 10, 15 years' time, our children are going to walk down the road and they will be walking in... There's four Asians walking together holding hands. There's four Indians. There's four... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the, yeah. everyone... We're just drawing the lines too fucking thick. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it'll be it'll be like, stop hate crimes against people who like sewing. Like, <laughs> just, yeah. Fucking <laughs> stop hate crimes, mate. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, just... How just, hard is it? Just stop crime. Like, focus on that. Like yeah. to stop trying to identify. Stop trying. And to how do you know that the Asian lady getting beaten up on the side of the street hasn't just raped someone? Exactly. Uh, and I'm not saying that Asians are rapists by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be taken that way. I guarantee it. I know. Like it's just can't fucking say anything anymore. You can't. Do you know? I saw someone. Uh, they were talking about governments regulating crypto, and I saw the best response. Someone said governments are more likely to regulate talking about crypto than regulating crypto. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> oh, so true. Can't um, win in this world. No, yeah, I totally agree. And and the worst, and, and there was a point that you was about to make, but I don't think you actually made it. And it's some the point that I was going to make is um, a problem, a huge problem that I foresee that not that I foresee that that I do see in these um, cultist um, groups is the 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 amount of misinformation. And the skewing of, uh, and as you say, like words, words should be used with precision. And these, the words that, the words that are put together through these groups are so precise that, uh, and are so deceptive that it makes the problem it pushes the problem way out of context. So an example of this is like, um, and I'm going to shit on feminism again, but I hate to do it, but 
a lot a lot of what I'm seeing at the moment are like you know these little almost like leaflet flyer poster sort of uh things of like ah oh, ninety percent of rapes happen by men um because if a man gets raped by a woman, they don't talk about it yeah um and or, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and and other like loads and they to, they're like just... picking out facts to yeah. to they're picking out facts to suit their ideology <laughs> rather than I mean I mean obviously they're going to do that but nobody is fighting the and nobody should I, I don't want I don't want anyone to fight the other side of it I just want like stay over, if you want to talk about it and rave about it over there you go and rave about it over there don't come up on my fucking timeline trying to push your ideas onto me. Um, giving me this false facts because I'm going to call it out and you're not going to be happy about it like stop fucking pushing your ideas out there and then hating on people that criticise it I seriously think we've got to start a uh, we've got to start our movement we've got to start our social media campaign start fucking taking people down <laughs> start telling them how it is yeah the thing is, this like it just it feels like there's so many people that are indoctrinated into these bad ideologies that nobody's criti- nobody's thinking critically about what they're doing. Um, I, I for sure, when these people get to thirty years old, I really hope that they look back at what they've, what the the things that they said, and they go, "What the fuck was I think? Like, why did I say that?" I hope they a hundred percent regret what they say. Because I know that would be me if I was in one of those groups. 20 years' time, I'm going to regret everything that I did to push that group. I think in 20 years' time, I'll just look like... I'll honestly like a look fucking back idiot. At, no, I'll, I'll look back at my beliefs and I'll just be like, you didn't have any, you just questioned everything. Fine, fair play. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> fine, yeah. like I reckon I'll be like, you were right, you were fucking right, and no one listened. <laughs> yeah. The world's gone to shit, the fucking sun wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> Dorsing was a cunt. <laughs> oh, theory me. And blowjob fucking seats are real. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> thinking about all this stuff whilst you're God. in the... God, fucking give me one of them. God, get the blowjob 5,000. <laughs> Me. Uh, I don't know where we go from here. I think we wrap it up and we yeah. say uh, we're looking forward to episode 13. 13, normally an unlucky number, but since numerology is all of a sudden important to us, 13 <laughs> is a good old lucky number for me because your chap, your boy Tim, was born on Friday the 13th. And look how it worked out. Thanks for listening. I always steal the end. <laughs> That's